one of the specific trends that we're seeing with new space is that there's more and more providers uh, of launch vehicles. Welcome, Lorian and Kolja. Today we talk about the growing space industry and how what is often called the new space is changing it and why this now suddenly is a concern for the export control community. So, Lorian, if we start with you, can you tell us what is the new space industry and how does it differ from the traditional space sector? Yes, thank you, Steph. Um, so, when we talk about new space, we often refer to this kind of process of innovation and commercialization in the global space industry. And uh, indeed, it's kind of changing the whole nature of the industry as a whole. It's new types of actors, these uh, startups that people are quite uh, familiar with, but also a wide range of uh, innovation centers, research institutes, universities. It's actors that are based in a wider range of states uh, than before. Um, actors also that work quite differently uh, with different business practices, um, perhaps. And I would say something important to mention is uh, also the increasing um, private in investments that go uh, into new space. Perhaps to finish with the technology uh, with new space, it's also all these um, smaller satellites and uh, small and micro launches that we've seen, so a lot that has uh, evolved. Interesting. I mean, obviously the industry is changing a lot, but Kolya, why is this now a concern for the export control community? Well, so with the changes that new space brings, we're actually seeing that there's now a much larger number of these actors that Lorian mentioned, which now have access to the technology that you can use for missiles. A lot of this is dual use technology because ballistic missiles and many space launch vehicles, they basically use much of the same technology. And so now we have a sector where you have these startup companies uh, or, you know, uh, spun out from, from larger uh, industrial actors which are working with this technology but which are ne not necessarily aware of some of the risks that are involved with handling and also exporting uh, this type of sensitive dual-use technology. And in general, a lot of the business practices in that whole sector are changing uh, as well. So for us as export controllers, um, we are concerned to a certain extent because it's not like the industry wants to do bad, but there's now a much um, bigger number of actors that could be targeted by a proliferation program in a state that wants to um, you know, illicitly procure uh, this type of technology and use it for their missile program. And so our approach to this very much comes from the perspective of the MTCR, the Missile Technology Control Regime, which is basically a group of 35 states which get together and uh, try and uh, formulate common standards for which technologies uh, are of a certain concern and where we should therefore uh, introduce uh, controls and uh, like have a regulatory framework uh, that covers them. That's really interesting and you have been this doing the study, which is forthcoming, uh, forthcoming published by CIPRI. And uh, in that study, you map out over 600 new space companies and across 84 countries. If you just briefly describe what did you do and in that study? Yes, yeah, so we, we looked at uh, 84 different uh, states. Um, we split that up into the 35 um, partners, that is the members of uh, the MTCR, and for those states we actually looked at um, the new space companies that they have and which of uh, the range of technologies that are controlled under uh, the MTCR they cover. So to get a sense of how broad the coverage of specifically the new space industry uh, is. Mm. And then for 45 um, states that are not part of the MTCR, but uh, which certainly have um, new space actors established on, on their territory, as well as the four so-called adherents, that is states that 
have actually gone through a sort of like political procedure to uh, pledge that they adhere to the guidelines and the control list of the MTCR. So for those 49 states in total, we actually mapped all of the new space companies that they have which work with uh, missile related technology. So that is mm. whether they develop it, whether they test it, uh, produce it, and then finally market or export it. Mm. Uh, all of those companies we try to identify and map that out to get a better understanding of the actual size uh, of that industry compared to this really huge growth of uh, of new space that we see in general to to really be able to say to what extent is there actually a missile concern that goes with this broader growth of the industry. Mm, that's really interesting. Um, Lorian, what did you find? So if I start with the uh, non-partners uh, and adherence that Collier mentioned, um, what we found is that more than half of these states have relevant companies on their territories today uh, developing um, missile-related uh, technology, and those companies can be categorized within the kind of new space um, uh, trend. Uh, and that means that there's a growing number of states that are developing relevant technology, but that are sitting outside the MTCR in a way. Um, and then another thing that is uh, particularly important is that a third of these states have um, currently taken up the control lists that are provided by the MTCR. Um, if I now turn to the partners, what we've seen with our mapping study is that um, there's a kind of growing spread of the technology among the partners. So in a majority of the MTCR partners, you're seeing um, companies across the kind of range of um, MTCR um, uh, item categories and, and missile technology that is controlled. Mm. And Kolle, I'm as I understand, part of this new space sector is also a growing number of companies who are building these so-called space launchers. Did you look at those as well? Yeah, so one of the specific trends that we're seeing with new space is that there's more and more providers uh, of launch vehicles, and particularly uh, what we refer to as small and micro launch vehicles. Uh, because satellites are getting smaller and smaller, there's much more demand now for bringing satellites into space. Everyone uses space-based services. So we try to look at that because obviously anyone who builds that type of uh, launch vehicle kind of brings together a lot of the different uh, technology, materials, and know-how that you need also if you were to build a missile. So they're kind of focal points for uh, missile-related technology. And so what we found actually is that there's currently uh, about 118 uh, ongoing projects to, uh, to build and operate small and micro launches, mm. and that is across 28 states. Mm. Um, we found 108 companies that are working on uh, these projects. Yeah, and we mentioned the MTCR uh, already, but if you just to capture these concerns, um, if you just talk, talk a bit about the standards the MTCR currently provides and in light of these new products, what uh, it should be doing to address these concerns from here? Yes, so I think if we start with um, the non-partners, yeah. um, one thing that the MTCR has been doing is outreach. Mm -hmm. um, so there's been, for the states that Collier mentioned, that uh, are not part of the MTCR, but that are developing uh, those small and micro launches, there's been quite regular and recent uh, engagement uh, through outreach, whether that's um, in, in the form of bilateral outreach visits um, from the MTCR, or whether that's through participation at um, these technical outreach meetings that the MTCR um, organizes. Something that the MTCR could perhaps do more of is to strengthen uh, outreach towards the much broader group of states that are more emerging uh, new space industry states. So they have perhaps a few missile relevant companies uh, on their territories. Mm. And um, evidence from our mapping showed that uh, there's been 
less engagement to date uh, with those states. I also want to touch on um, other ways that the MTCR can approach this. One of these is um, the adherence procedure that's been um, uh, put forward since uh, 2014. So far, only four states uh, became formal adherence to the MTCR. Uh, and this is certainly something that could be relevant for more states uh, that today are involved in, in new space and in missile relevant technology to take up. Um, ad with adherence, you get a number of benefits and increased engagement uh, with the MTCR. And so that could be particularly relevant for um, a lot of these um, new yeah. space industry states. And the other thing uh, is uh, membership. So prospects for um, expanding membership of the MTCR at the moment are very limited. Uh, but this is a conversation that um, the MTCR can have about what the objectives for membership um, uh, can be. And, um, and certainly in the longer term, there could be potential states that are very active in new space and that also already uh, apply the uh, control lists provided by the MTCR that could be relevant to, to consider. Mm. Perhaps to add to that, just seeing that uh, so many of the technology uh, item categories that the MTCR provides um, are being worked on by companies in the partners, uh, that certainly also highlights the need really to do outreach to your own industry. So the MTCR partners need to do um, their national outreach. And the MTCR also provides a forum that they can then use to exchange about that and share good practices. Mm. Uh, because that really is where you bring together so many of those states that have that industry and to do that very important and necessary engagement. And taking from that, ideally what they should do is create guidelines that help every state. Because as we're seeing, new space is not limited to the MTCR and its partners, but it's spreading much further. Mm. So in order to create a public good that the MTCR shares with everyone and not just uh, within itself, it would be really good if this type of uh, sharing of good practices would result in public guidance materials that can be shared. Mm. And from what you see today, is there a willingness for this engagement? Do you see that? Uh, we've certainly seen that um, new space has started to become a topic at uh, the most recent MTCR uh, meetings. Uh, so we certainly see that being taken up. We've tried to bring it into uh, the conversation in, in different multilateral forums uh, as well. And as part of the project that we have been conducting, uh, we certainly try to provide resources for this. We've tried to add our bit with this study um, and uh, with the other materials that we've produced. Thank you both really for your really important and very interesting work and for talking to us today. Thank, Thank you. you.